First of all, let me just say, I was watching the game last night, and damn, Zion, I was a hell of a fourth quarter. I mean, I legitimately thought this kid was going to end up being all hype, but that did not disappoint. I'm looking forward to seeing more of this guy. Secondly, stay tuned for the end of this video, where not only will I talk about this, as I always do, but look what else I got here. Stick tuned. <clears throat> Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I am your host, Nathan Lyle, and this is some updates for the w upcoming WNBA season. So, uh, if you haven't already heard, there's some big news that's been happening here in 2020. It's a huge year. First of all, the women are getting paid more. Like, I don't, I don't want to talk too much about the details, but long story short, they're getting paid more, like they wanted to. And there's also more opportunities for them to keep playing in the offseason and making more money and, you know, be on display across America. But, I mean, at the end of the day, hey, they got some headway. They made progress. No, the people in charge listened to the players. And now, I mean, this is, it's good. This is great news on all fronts. And so, in addition to that, some of the new things that are happening. First of all, it's been announced free agency officially begins, I believe, February 10th. Yeah, you're allowed to, they're allowed to start negotiating January 28th. Contracts can be officially signed February 10th. But more importantly, WNBA 2020 season, they're introducing something called the Commissioner's Cup, an in-team tournament. I am excited to see how this goes, how this all plays out. Because according to the rules, first of all, they're adding two extra games. The season has expanded from 34 games to 36. That's interesting. And they have a Commissioner's Cup, which... Let's see. Oh, of course, I have to sneeze. Give me a sec. Okay, I'm back. Uh, the Commissioner's Cup is basically... They <coughs> okay, now I'm back. The Commissioner's Cup. I've said it a few times now. It basically seems to be like the first home and away game that you play against each of these individual teams in your conference will be count towards cup goal cup will count towards your cup record and then there will be what later in the season at before like after the olympics are over but before they officially resume league play they'll have the cup tournament games it, this I'll link you to the article down below if you haven't read it already. It's an interesting notion. It's something that's been brought up with uh, with like the NBA and other it's I think it's cool. I'm definitely interested in seeing where this goes. I'm excited cuz you know free agency is about to start it's January 23rd. So that means you no, know, in less than a week they're going to start talking to people. And hopefully February 10th, day of, they'll, you'll see some things get signed right away. It'll be interesting to see what moves get made, who goes where, and who stays. Uh, also, already the news just broke that Maya Moore is going to be missing this season again. And it does upset me because she is probably my second favorite player in the league behind Candace Parker. But I also understand why she's doing it. No, she's fighting to free a man for je uh, from jail. I can't be mad at her for that. I mean, as a black man in America, I'm very much aware of how many people are wrongfully convicted and some of them spend decades behind bars and even end up getting death sentences before some... And then and it later comes out that, oh yeah, they were framed by the cop who arrested them. So yeah, I can't be mad at her for doing this. I, in fact, I applaud her, you know, for taking time out of her career to help other people, and especially when you're an athlete, though, there's a time limit. There's only so long that you can push your body before it's just not physically capable of doing it. So just yes, I, all the respect in the world to Maya Moore for what she's choosing to do here. 
The, I'm, I miss watching her. I hope she does come back. She says she still intends to return. She has no plan to retire. And I hope that's true. Because I, I, like I said, I miss watching her play. She's fantastic. But that being said, one more Maya this season. Hopefully everyone else is coming back, though. I haven't heard about any injuries so far. So, you know, hopefully we'll get back to this WNBA season and all of the biggest stars will be ready and available the entire season. And it could end up turning out to be one of the most exciting seasons we've ever had. And, you know, like I said, we've got the Cup games. They've got an expanded schedule. They've got more games on ABC. There's just... It's going to be huge. Opening weekend, the schedule's already out. We'll link that down below, too. Opening weekend tips off Friday, May 15th. Minnesota Lynx at, at, at Chicago Sky. Atlanta Dream at Indiana Fever. Dallas Wings at the Storm. Will I be covering this regular season? Somewhat. Uh, it's If I have time, maybe. Because for the most part... I pretty much I'm done what I've had to do, you know, because I have my autobiography out. I've got a comic book out. We're putting four of these out there. Three, two of them are already completely done. Third one's in progress, and the fourth one we're gonna push through it as quick as we can. And then, so yeah, this is a big year. I'm releasing. I I've got a fiction novel that's already done. It's just I wanna. Take some few months to edit and tweak it as much as possible, but the story is what it's gonna be by now, and it's just like I said, you know, making it as good as I, it can get. And so, yeah, it's it's a big year. It's gonna be a big year for me, but also less actual work than what I've done before. So who knows? I I'm not gonna guarantee every single week I'll be making a new video, but. I will try to give you what coverage I can. It looks like it's going to be exciting, and it might be very hard for me to keep up with. We'll see what happens. I can guarantee you this much. I will be watching. I will be watching, and I will be giving you a... I will be doing power rankings. We've already had some shakeups, new coaching hires. You know, like I said, Maya Moore announcing she's not coming back. And... So yeah, well, it's going to be an intriguing season. We'll see what happens. And also, you know, we got an interesting draft class. UNESCO, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that. So we'll just say Sabrina from now on. Just save me the humiliation. So yeah, Sabrina from Oregon, interesting player. I've been hearing her name for the past couple of years. And Oregon actually beating the women's team. Like, Wow. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's it it's I'm more, it's kind of a bad look from the outside that like these are supposed to be the best athletes in America, and they're getting beat by a college team. But for those who already watch and respect the WNBA and professional women athletes, that just yeah, it's that's respect to Oregon. How did they do that? Because I think it's the first time the women's national team has lost a game since, like, the 90s. I think I'd have to look that up again just to be sure. But it's it's been a while. It's been a long while. So, yeah. Definitely a lot of eyes on her. Very likely to be the first overall pick. Which, if I remember correctly, was it New York? I know see, New York and Indiana were both in the lottery. I think Chicago was too. And anyways, whatever. We'll get we'll get to that later. Okay, draft is in April. I'm assuming it usually is. But yeah, I'm just this video is just to let you know. Hey, WNBA is coming back full force. It's gonna be a hell of a ride. Buckle up. Free agency starts February 10th. Link down below to some of these articles if you haven't heard the news yet. So it's, it'll give you a lot more in-depth than me. And also, my autobiography is still on sale in multiple retailers. You can find it at PrintShopCentral.com, Amazon.com, Walmart.com, Target.com, uh, BarnesandNoble.com. You can find it in so many places, physical and digital copies. You can also find... Oh, this one's not out yet. 
unfortunately there's there is some mistake with the printing on the interior uh, stuff getting cut off and so you know we're pushing back the official release date hopefully I can get it out in February because if March 1st hits and this isn't out yet god damn it so we're pushing this release date back a little bit till we can like get all the kinks ironed out and the digital thing I'm trying my goddamn best. Well, I, there's still a possibility of the digital being released before this January ends. So hopefully we can at least get that much. But for now, just know. Like, it's in progress. It's like almost there. And we just keep tripping in front of the finish line. There were, the, this series is got the copyright right here. Yeah, and um, it's something that I originally, con the character was originally conceived when I was seven. I actually talk about that a little bit in this book, an in extra incentive to go by this. And, you know, he's an amalgamation of so many of the different comics I grew up loving, like Spawn, Spider-Man, Batman, Hulk. They all influenced what ended up in this character. You know, it's, it's, he's existed for more than 20 years, so now to have an actual physical thing that I can hold in my hands it means the world to me and so you know, hopefully gonna sell it for like five bucks pretty cheap to print so hopefully you can buy it or if you if you don't mind and uh, yeah it, it's been a two year process just to get this far so even though I'm frustrated with how these past couple of months have been going because I had initially thought we could push this out in November. It didn't happen. And now looking like January not going to happen either. It's been a long, frustrating process. But I, we're here, man. We're almost there. Just somehow it's like one step forward, two step back with this thing. But I'm not giving up. We're almost there. I mean, overall, his story, we might never be able to finish it in my lifetime. Like, if I don't get super famous, just for the mere fact that, you know, <laughs> this story is so long that if I did a monthly comic, it could take, like, 40 years to get through the whole thing. I said this has existed for over 20 years, didn't I? I, I put a lot into this. So, like, you might never... The world might never see his story in its entirety. Uh, we're starting with the origin story, which, let's be honest, book one is basically the origin story by itself. And then the next 12... Then the origin story is 13 books, and, like, it's going to be all about, you know, him you know, getting his powers and learning to use them and stuff. And facing off his first supervillain, which... Unfortunately, not going to come out this year. It's an interesting character, though. But that's like book seven, I believe. He first shows up, and we're only doing the first four this year. But yeah, look forward to that. You get a chance to at least meet the character and know him. You know, he's a uh, he comes from a mixed background, a lot of Central and South American. But you know, his father was born and raised in Puerto Rico, so that's the nationality he claims. I mean, he's American, he claims Puerto Rican heritage, and, you know, yeah, his power is, well, why don't you just read the book and find out? Well, you know, so yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, feel free to subscribe, because I will be covering the WNBA when the season comes out, and I'm try to get into covering the NBA at least... You know, for the playoff run, if nothing else, in March and April. And, yeah. Just buy my autobiography. It's still out everywhere. <laughs> and, in the meantime, to the, whenever you happen to see my face again, my name is Nathan Law. This has been The Fan Perspective. Hope you have a great new year.